2017 Australian Sailing Hall of Fame inductees Jenny Armstrong and Belinda Stowe. Jenny Armstrong and Belinda Stowell created history when they became the first Australian women to win an Olympic gold medal in sailing at the Sydney 2000 Games. Competing in front of their home crowd and with all the pressure and excitement that comes with such a monumental event, the Aussie pairing kept their cool and realised their ultimate dream of an Olympic gold medal. Kiwi-born Armstrong competed for New Zealand at the 1992 Olympics but teamed up with Zimbabwean-born Stoll in 1998. Working with coach Victor, the medal maker Kovalenko, the Aussie girls worked hard to earn their Olympic selection. Their hard work, strict fitness regime and dedication to get the job done saw them enter the Olympic regatta as the team to watch. They came out of the block strongly, winning the first race of the Olympic regatta and by race eight were wearing the gold jersey an accessory they did not relinquish. In winning the gold medal, they became the first Australian women to win a sailing medal, but also broke Australia's sailing gold medal drought of 28 years. A dominant force in 470 sailing for many years, Armstrong and Stowell's Olympic success will be remembered always as the first Australian female crew to stand atop the dais in an Olympic sailing event. Jenny Armstrong and Belinda Stowell, 2017 Australian Sailing Hall of Fame inductees. You were telling me, Belinda, that uh, around the traps you were known as the Zimbabwean and the Kiwi. But how did you two meet? We have to thank Adrienne Kahalan for that because she met me in 1995 at a 470 World Championship when I knew nothing about 470 sailing at all. And Somehow, a year later, she recruited myself, as well as knowing Jenny from before, and joined her all-women's Whitbread Round the World racing, L Racing team. And uh, Jenny and I both arrived in Southampton, and they gave us the mast and said, it's lying down there on the ground, and you and you, you can work together and get it vertical, and we're sailing, around, sailing back to Australia. So... We ran out of food, gas, fuel and water, so there's not much else you can run out of. <laughs> and um, eventually the campaign also ran out of money, which is fairly important as well. And so it was pretty special because we removed the 10 people in between the bow and the stern and jumped onto a 470 together. <laughs> Victor, Victor's just shaking his head, but <laughs> Jenny, um, what was the, the spark between you two? Because it, it was just almost spontaneous well I think I mean we had in common with a lot of the other other teams here is that we just got on straight away we just clicked and I think it was our um, our common thing that we had was we, we didn't really know what we were doing on this big boat but we were in it together and uh, we were better together than separate so so you had to renounce your Zimbabwean citizenship but your mum was Australian before you came down under Yes, I came to Australia for university and to, to come to Australia I needed to in get an Australian passport and uh, the Zimbabweans don't like you to have two. So I gave up the Zimbabwean and, and got my Australian passport and that sort of helped. And in your case, Jenny, um, New Zealand yachting wasn't prepared to support you in your quest to represent at the next Olympics. Tell us about that. Yes, well, at the, it's always tricky to find the perfect team member. So. Um, I met Belinda and I knew it was kind of a perfect storm that if this was going to be my best opportunity was to sail with Belinda. So I called the New Zealand Federation and told them of my plan and they, uh, they said, no thanks, see you later. So I... Uh, oh, we love to get one back <laughs> on the Kiwis, don't we? Yeah. So I uh, became an Australian and joined up with Belinda and Victor. And Did you went. receive a, a Christmas card from New Zealand Sailing? After the medal, yes. After the yes. medal, yes. Yeah. After the medal. And um, at what point did you come across Victor, Belinda? Victor arrived on our shores in October 1997 and sat us all on a, around a table. There was a group of us all aspiring to 
be better at 470 sailing and we had this great man arrive, softly spoken, quietly spoken and we knew we were onto a good wicket because he just had so much knowledge and immediately for myself I, I just trusted him. I, I trusted Victor implicitly because I felt that if there was one person that could help our team to be the best then he was the man. But is it true, Jenny, that Victor didn't think he was on a good wicket? I mean, you were way down in the pecking order, you two. Way down. I don't even know if Victor knew we were there when he first arrived. <laughs> but I do remember the first sort of encounters we had with Victor with his broken English. And it, I'll summarise, but it basically went, Belinda's too short, you're too tall, and three years is not enough. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was that. We had to prove you wrong. <laughs> That's red rag But we had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how did you prove him wrong? Because in, in three years you, you pulled off what everyone thought was impossible. There's no replacement to hard work and so we had the inner drive to work hard and to be the best. But we also had incredible guidance and somebody who worked as hard as we did. And so it was about just getting down and getting out on the water as much as we possibly could and I remember Victor being so surprised on a day in October where we got daylight saving and he was so excited he's like wow that gives me one more hour for training so <laughs> instead of getting home at eight we got home at nine so uh, it was it was just as many hours as we could on the water and and put your head down and really work hard and he loved the idea of the of the southern summer and the northern hemisphere summer so you could work all year round and there was a special presentation to you after the campaign, your yeah. training uh, schedule and your, almost your timesheet. Apparently, it was perfect. You had never missed a training session from Victor. Well, Victor was very special and gave me an, an A3 paper where he's an amazing recorder of attendance and everything else, and he's put a little cross each time we arrived at the said training session. And Jenny and I didn't miss a training session for two years. So there's two years worth of crosses on this sheet that Victor very fine, kindly wow. gave me. And Jenny, with all that hard work, I mean, you, you literally didn't miss a minute. Going into the Olympic campaign, um, clearly there was a, a lot of self-belief and self-confidence. Just give us a, an insight into how you guys were looking at the regatta. Well, I had come, um, this wasn't my first Olympics 2000, I had competed in Barcelona in 92 for that other country. Um, and I had finished fourth, which was actually, I think, instrumental to us winning gold because I knew the only thing I, mistake I made in that campaign was not believing I could do it. So for the three years, that was my main goal, was to actually believe it deep down and then force Belinda to believe it too, that we could actually do it on the day. So... Uh, it was a lot of, and there was one moment I had uh, when we did get this, the the uh, yellow bib, which was showing that you were the current leader. As I actually threw out the other one, I threw it in the rubbish because I wasn't going to give up that yellow one, and it's <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> so that's yeah, okay. And th that moment for me was pretty Im instrumental as well because I remember Jenny coming to me and handing me the yellow bib and. I was a bit nervous and thinking, wow, we've got the yellow bib and right, it's game on. And I was standing there holding it and then I look across, Jenny's already got it on over the life jacket, <laughs> rubbing her chest up and down saying, we're not giving these back. And I thought, Ben, I'm going to better get mine on in a hurry. <laughs> I want to be part of this team. So uh, I put mine on and I didn't give back either. So. Despite the fact that you were in, in that winning position in the last race, I believe there was some self-doubt towards the end of that race. Uh, not so much doubt for I myself, think. but definitely we'll call it team doubt. Team doubt? Yep, you team weren't doubt. sure whether you had another lap to go? It's not, yeah, we were in Sydney Harbour on the B course racing up to Bradley's Head. And it was a great day. It was the racing had been postponed the day before, so got rid of a few nerves when we had to go out on the water and not race. And so the sea breeze was kicking in and everything was going well. And Victor was a bit nervous and he drove over and he started to say, you know about Bradley's head? And Jenny just said, Victor, we've got it. <laughs> and so there was this 
calmness before the start. We had it, but because it was a short course, it was an I3. So for the trapezoids, it was a I3, three laps. So I was the swimmer in the team originally. I swam competitively for 10 years. So Jenny had always said to me straight off the bat, your job's counting laps. So we were coming up Port Tack off Bradley's, getting that nice lift into the top mark. And Jenny said, so we're just going around and down and around to the finish. And I'm going, no, no, we have to go back downwind and then up and then down and around to the finish. And Jenny's going, no, I think we just have to go down around to the finish. And I'm going, no, we don't. <laughs> it's an I3. And so this conversation ensued a little bit and we're still barreling towards the top mark and I'm on the wire thinking, please believe me, please believe me, please believe me. And there's just this silence and eventually, um, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. How sure? <laughs> <laughs> 100% sure, and sorry, Victor, I don't think you know this story. So <laughs> I said, 100% sure, and again, this silence, and I'm thinking, come on. Finally, he's like, okay, you're right. I'm going, yep, I'm right, we're going yeah. downwind. So it would have been a bit embarrassing on world TV to be in the gold medal position and then sell the wrong course, so luckily we had that wired. Okay, Belinda Stoll and Jenny Armstrong, congratulations on being inductees into the Sailing Australia Hall of Fame.